Hello my friends, Miss Aaliyah here, and today we're going to be reading a book called Island Born by Junot Diaz, illustrated by Leo Espinosa. Looking at this picture here, what do you think this book might be about? Let's find out together. Every kid in Lola school was from somewhere else. Hers was the school of faraway places. Mai was from a city so big that it was like its own country. Indy and Camila were from a stony village at the tippy top of the world. Mateo had lived in a desert so hot even the cactus fainted. Nu was born in a jungle famous for its tigers and its boat. And Lola was from the island. Are you or a family member from a faraway place? And if so, where? So when her teacher Miss Obi told the class, please draw a picture of the country you are originally from, your first country, and bring it in tomorrow, everyone got super excited. I'm going to put a pyramid in mine, said Dahlia. And I'll draw a canal this long, Franklin said. There's going to be a mongoose in mine, Nelson yelled. Nelson always yelled. Everyone was talking about their drawing. Everyone but Lola. Lola, you see, loved to draw, but she had left the island when she was just a baby so that she didn't really remember any of it. Lola raised her hand. She hated raising her hand almost as much as she hated Nelson's yelling. Miss, what if you don't remember where you're from? What if you left before you could start remembering? No problema, Miss Obi said. Are there people around you who do remember? Like my whole neighborhood, Lola said. And they're always talking about the island. Well then, Miss Obi started, maybe, but Lola finished her and it made her sad. Everybody was remembering their first home, even Nelson who forgot everything. Nelson even forgot his name once, like for an hour. Lola had always wanted to remember the island, but no matter how hard she tried, she never could. It was like a familiar word just at the tip of your tongue, but instead of a word, this was an entire world. Lola closed her eyes and tried to recall anything about the island, but nothing came up. She kept trying all through the school day to help her focus. She put her fingers on the sides of her head like her abuela psychic sometimes did. Are you okay? Her cousin Leticia asked as they walked home from school together. I have to draw a picture of the island, Lola explained, but I was just a baby when we left. Prima, you have to help me. I don't remember a lot either, except for the bats. They were as big as blankets. What do you remember about the island? Why the music, of course. Sorry, my friends. Why the music, of course. The whole country is like the inside of a gira, like the inside of a drum. You mean like our neighborhood, Lola said. The neighborhood had so much music, it was like a radio with a dial broken off. On the island, there's even more music. There's more music than air and everybody's always dancing. Even, their, even in their sleep, people are dancing. Sleep dancing, Lola sketched. Do you guys like dancing? And if so, what's your favorite type of genre? Miss Aaliyah likes to dance salsa. Leticia led Lola into the barbershop that her brother Jonathan owned. Lola had to do an assignment about the island. She needs to know about what she remember most about it. Wepa, said Jonathan laughing. The agua de coco, how wonderful it tastes when you drink it right from the coconut. Mr. Rodriguez sat up in the chair and the mangoes that are the size of your head, so sweet. They make you want to cry, Lola said. They make you want to cry, Lola said. She loves mangoes. That's exactly. Do you guys like drinking coconut water? I know Miss Aaliyah loves drinking coconut water. 
How much color there is, said the woman waiting with her son. Colorful cars, colorful houses, flowers everywhere. Even the people are like a rainbow, every shade ever made. Like us in here, Lola said, even more color, the woman said. Agua, mango heads, rainbow people. Lola was trying to keep up. The island sounds so beautiful. Why do we even leave? Well, it isn't all beautiful, the woman's son said. The heat on you like, is like five pulleys. The oldest barber muttered and other things. Like what? Lola wanted to ask, but the oldest barber had already turned away. In the lobby of the, old, of the building, the cousin ran into Mr. Mir, the superintendent. Leticia called out, hey, Mr. Mir, can you tell us what you most remember about the island? Nobody cares about the old stuff, Mr. Mir grumbled. Just be glad that you live here. Don't listen to him, Leticia said. Keep going and call me later if you need any help, okay? I will, Lola said. When Lola got into the elevator, she put her fingers on her temples and closed her eyes. Island, she called, like it was a cat. But like a cat, the island did not come. At home, Lola was found her abuela at the kitchen table trying to finish a puzzle. Abuela loved puzzles. Abuela, I'm supposed to draw a picture of the island for school, but I don't remember it. Why don't I remember it? Iha, you were just a baby when you left. But the other kids remember. Just because you don't remember a place doesn't mean it's not in you. Will you tell me about what you most, what you most remember, Lola asked? Do you think... And that sunset, sometimes the dolphins will come out of the water to bow goodnight. And up north, where I'm from, there are even whales in the surf. Beach poetry, dolphins, surfing whales, Lola sketched as fast as she could. So, boys and girls, have you ever gone to the beach and ever saw any whales or fishes when you were there? And if so, what type of whales or fishes did you see? Like the blue whale? Hmm. Lola's mother stuck her head in from the kitchen. Iha, what I remember most is the hurricane that hit the island right after you were born. Like the biggest, baddest wolf of all, it huffed and puffed and blew thousands of house into the sky. Where were we? Lola asked, her eyes wide. We were hiding under the bed, is where we were, Abuela said. That's right, her mother said, and you know what? You never cried once. You were such a brave little girl. I wish I could remember that, Lola cited. Well, it happened, her mother said. You may not remember the island, but it remembers you. You should really talk to Mr. Mir, Abuela suggested. He knows more about the island than almost anybody. We tried asking him, Lola said, but he didn't want to help. Mr. Mir can be a little grouchy sometimes. Let me talk to Mrs. Mir. I bet we can get him to help. Abuela called downstairs and shouted at Mrs. Mir, who then shouted at Mr. Mir. The old people were always shouting at each other. That's how they talked. Maybe Nelson was an old person in training. <laughs> Go on down, Abuela said. Mr. Mir said he would try to help. Lola was a little nervous, that, but that didn't stop her from knocking on the super's door. Your grandma says you've been interviewing people about the island. Lola nodded nervously. Yes, sir. It's for a class assignment. What have they told you? She flipped through her sketches. Bat blankets, more music than air, fruit that makes you cry, beach poems, and a hurricane like a wolf. I see, Mr. Mir said. So no one told you about the monster? 
Lola's eyes got wide. She shook her head. No. Even those who don't know always don't want to talk about him. Mr. Mayor turned toward the old worn map he had of the island. Our island has always been a beautiful place. It was when I was your age, and it is today. But even the most beautiful places can attract a monster. A long time ago, long before you were born, that's exactly what happened. A monster fell upon our poor island. For once, Lola's pencil didn't move. It was the most dreadful monster anyone had ever seen. The whole island was terrified and no one could defeat it. It was just too strong. For 30 years, the monster did as it pleased. It could destroy an entire town with a single word and make a whole family disappear simply by looking at it. Lola's curly hair was uncurling with fear. Did you see the monster, Mr. Mir? Yes, all the time. Were you scared? We were all very scared. Lola's heart was pounding. So what happened next, Mr. Mir? What should always happen to monsters? Heroes rose up. Strong, smart young women just like you, Lola, and a few strong, smart young men too. They, they got tired of being afraid and fought the monster. With a titanic battle that was, the whole island shook from their struggle. The monster tried all of its evil trick, but in the end, the heroes found their monster's weakness and vanished it forever. So remember, boys and girls, sometimes there may be times where you're really scared, but it takes brave souls like yourself and people around you to stand up and truly make a difference. Wow, Lola whispered. Oops, sorry. <laughs> wow, Lola whispered. What happened to the heroes? No one really knows, really. It was lo so long ago. Mr. Mayor took off his glasses and sighted. Anyway, you should go back upstairs. It's getting close to dinner time. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, Lola said. Thank you for all of your help. What do you notice in this picture? Do you think that could be Mr. and Mrs. Mayor in this picture? Do you think he was one of the heroes that stood up to the monster? How did it go? Lola's mother asked. It was really good. Lola looked at the blank page in her hands. Lola spent the rest of the night drawing the island. She started out with one page, but she needed more room. So she added another page and then another, and soon she had a book. She worked through dinner and she worked in bed and she was just finishing the last touches on the cover when her abuela came in to check on her. Abuela picked up the drawing of the final battle and she got really still. Abuela, do you know about the monster? Of course, Iha. Why do you think so many of us are here in the north? Lola put her arms around her abuela. You must have been so scared. Sometimes we were, her abuela whispered, but we were also brave. The next day it snowed. Lola put on her scarf and boots and stuffed her assignment under the, her coat. Bendición, mami. Bendición, abuela. Bendición, hija, they both called. Good luck. Mr. Mir was pushing garbage cans against the curb. Thank you, Mr. Mir, slayer of monsters. He laughed. Good luck, Lola, daughter of heroes. In class, all of the students were buzzing about their pictures. Nelson's mother had baked cupcakes for everyone, so it was like a little party. Miss Obi hung up the drawing on the wall. Now our classroom has windows, she said. Anytime you want to look at one another's first homes, all you have to do is look out the window. Then Miss Obi reached Lola's desk. So how did it go, Lola? Were you able to remember anything? I tried really, really hard, but nothing came and that made me feel bad. But then I realized that I don't have to feel bad because even if I've never set foot on an island, it doesn't matter. The island is me. Nelson snorted. That is so corny. It is not. Nelson, be nice, Miss Obi said. 
She and the other students gathered around Lola's desk. Nelson made sure he got real close so he could see everything. Lola suddenly got nervous. Go ahead, Lola, show us. Okay, Lola said, taking a deep breath when she opened her book. And out burst the island. That's the end, boys and girls. So I really hope you enjoyed this read aloud. I know Miss Aaliyah did. It really reminded her of uh, when I was growing up in Puerto Rico. I just want you guys to remember that no matter where you come from, home will always be around you and inside of you. So I want you guys to pick up your head and be proud of who you are because you are so beautiful and you are so special. It was really nice doing this read aloud. I hope you have such a wonderful day. Bye.